Hello everyone. So the video today is actually a conversation that I'm having with the students in the lab and I want to get their perspectives in terms of how the experience of being a graduate student or an undergraduate student have actually has have affected them yes, and the way how they see their careers in the future. To begin with, we have here Daniel from the left, on the left side here. Daniel is a PhD student and he is just about to close to finishing, graduating. Uh, there is he's starting his own career, so independently. So we're going to hear from him. And also we have in the middle here, we have Aris, who is just beginning her master's degree, the learning experience that she's having and how this is actually, if it, this is meeting or not meeting her expectations and the challenges that she's facing. And on the right side here, we have Matea, who is an undergraduate student, and he's also almost done, almost finishing his undergrad, but he was, he's been in the lab for almost three years now, doing research, independent research, and now he's doing a, an honors thesis. He wants to go to medical school, so we're gonna also hear from his point of view. Of so to begin, let's hear from Daniel. So Daniel, tell us a little bit about your future expectations, the challenges that you see from the point that you finished, you're finishing, you're graduating, and how you're going to move on to your next stages of your career. Yeah, absolutely. So I've my experience here, I've, I've been a student, a graduate student in this lab for six years. I did my master's and now my PhD here. And moving into my career within the next six months to a year is, is something that I look forward to. I plan on going into a career in teaching at the post-secondary level, so at a college or at a university. First, there are a number of skills that I have acquired here in the lab that I can apply to a number of different aspects of my life, but particularly in my professional career. So I, I think that I'm well prepared to move into a career, albeit in a slightly different area. But the biggest challenge that I see is balancing at this moment, concluding my PhD study, studies which are my full-time commitment as well as preparing myself professionally for a career in teaching so I, there are a number of workshops that I need to attend to uh, be a, a considered a better candidate for a teaching position um, I have a part-time teaching position as well where I teach a course and that's allowing me to gain some experience so that I'm a more uh, qualified candidate when I do apply for a full-time position so balancing all of the commitments that I currently have, one, concluding my full-time PhD, and two, transitioning into a career, that has been the, the, the biggest challenge. Aris, what about you? How would you say this lab experience has been for you just beginning and in the first, what, you're in the first what, six months of yes. your, your master's? How would you characterize your experience as a sure. beginner master's? Yes. So I started my master in September. Um, the first couple of months actually was very challenging. Um, I was learning so many stuff um, that I never actually thought about it before. For example, we started learning about Western blotting that I had no idea what is it. And I made so many mistakes in the first couple of months. I'm, I'm still making mistakes and I'm learning from those. Um, it was very challenging because sometimes I make mistakes that I'm like, oh, why did why this problem just happen? I have to figure out the solution for it. And um, sometimes I was very frustrated and I was like, what's wrong? With, I'm, I'm doing hard, but I'm not getting the results. But it's troubleshooting. You have to be patient. You have to try to solve that problem. And um, something that I really liked about um, doing the research in this lab is the topic that I'm working on. Ketogenic diet is something that very tangible people are asking me about it all the time. And I'm looking forward for my results without any mistakes <laughs> and looking forward for the careers in the future as well. Excellent. <laughs> what about you? Matea, how has it been for you in the last three years? Mm -hmm. And now that you're trying to, you're applying for medical schools, mm -hmm. how has the lab experience actually impacted your, your choices in your professional, or the idea of what you're gonna follow in the future? It's definitely been a journey. Like Eris has said, 
Uh, the start can sometimes be difficult because you're transitioning from a, especially as a, as a first year undergrad student, when I came here, you're transitioning from a very academic to a more hands-on environment. And so there's a lot of challenges associated with that. But once you get past those hurdles, and there are a few, I think um, it becomes a very rewarding experience and comes with its, with its own set of challenges, but it's also its own set of um, positives that you, that you gain as being a part of the lab. You learn lots of transferable skills, as my uh, colleague mentioned, uh, including, for example, collaborating with other people, uh, critical thinking, you know, compiling, analyzing data. And this, this, these skills can be taken and applied into various aspects of your life. They can be applied to medicine, they can be applied to a large number of other degrees. And so I think specifically research when it comes to applying to medical school is extremely beneficial for simply for, for a number of ways. One being that you it's much more easy to write the, the host of application essays that you have to put together as, a, as an undergraduate student. So you have many more experiences to call upon. For example, an essay might ask you, well, what's one hard thing that you encountered when you were applying to medical school or throughout your undergraduate years? And you can, you can draw on a lot of these examples that you've experienced through research, for example. Other thing is medicine is now nowadays a very broad field, it encompasses everything from the hard sciences to psychosocial aspects of medicine and global health. And so any really a lot of research can tie into medicine from a lot of different angles. It doesn't you don't have to specifically study research something that you think you might be pursuing in medic in, in the context of medicine in the future. You can you can really tie it in from different angles. But specifically in our lab we look at ketogenic diet and the effect it has on different signaling pathways and stuff like this. And this is also very relevant to what I'm interested in as well. And so it's it's great if you can find something that ties into what you will be looking at in the future. But it doesn't necessarily have to be. As I mentioned, you can you can come at it from a lot of different angles. So I think the number one most beneficial way I would say it gives you a lot of experiences you can call upon when you're putting together your application, when you're having these interviews, when people ask you specific challenges that you've, that you've had in the past, you have now a large aspect of your undergraduate career that you can say, or undergraduate studies that you can call upon and say, well, here's something that I have found challenging, here's something that I found rewarding, and here's something that I took from this experience that's gonna help me be a better medical student for those reasons. Okay. Other than just getting a reference letter, because a lot of the students that come to me, they say, oh, I wanna apply to medical school and I need a reference letter, can I, can I, volunteer in your lab and I have to say this really turns me off because if you all you want is a reference letter probably it's the better things for you to do than just volunteer and try to make this a reference letter when you came to the lab what was your driving or your motivation to come to the lab well, me personally I have a very interesting story because I was in my first year one of my health sciences classes and we're talking about different diets and the effect they have on metabolism and specifically the ketogenic diet came up, which I'm very passionate about myself, having been experimenting with various diets and being fond of health from, from an early age. And so for me personally, came, I came at it from that angle. It was, it was a new area, a new look into something that I've been interested in for a long time, as opposed to approaching it from a personal experimentation point of view, as I have in the past, or from an academic point of view. This is now a, a, uh, approaching it from the research perspective, from the being in the lab, hands-on, figuring out how hypotheses become future foundations for future research and how from the ground up people slowly build an understanding of these things. And so for me personally, it was, it was that side that motivated me the most to pursue the research experience. Uh, to pursue a research opportunity, like you said, that's not simply from the perspective of getting a reference letter, but also they have some sort of attachment to the idea or the research, something that they're fond of either from personal experience or that, that sounds interesting to them that they, that they could potentially be interested in. Something that can open doors for you, but not simply in the references perspective but also from a from an intrigue perspective a curiosity perspective something that will give you more insight into other uh, things that you might enjoy to pursue and, and and to be honest it's it's really about being open to different experiences and knowing that when you come to a place it's not going to be exactly what you envisioned it because it never is but simply being aware of that and being able to adapt and slowly but surely make the best of experiences that you now Aris I have one thing that always crosses my mind is as a student and in your beginning, you have two things that usually are requirements for your degree. One is that you have to take courses, you have to TA, and you have to do lab work. Yes. So how has it been for you? Think, do you think this is a valid experience? Or so at the beginning, um, in September and October, when I just started, the, I realized the workload in the courses was okay, but at the same time, my um, workload in the lab was a bit because I was trying to learn stuff I had to take notes start learning everything was new so my priority was trying to learn my 
um, lab work. But at the same time, I was taking stats course, which took a bit of my time. I was a bit stressed, to be honest, because I had this mindset of, oh, it's like undergrad, I have to get good grades. It was very challenging, but after a couple of months, I realized maybe I can handle it a bit better. Like, I, I can manage my work in the lab, um, I'll still prior, prior to, prioritize my lab work, but at the same time do my um, courses. But uh, about the courses in the fall, um, I was looking for more something that helps you to learn more different skills because in undergrad there wasn't that much opportunity to learn about how to present, um, improve the presentation skills. I, I was looking for that, but there wasn't that much experience. But this, sem this sem semester in January, I'm taking a course that you start learning how to do presentation, how to communicate with other students. There is like 20 students in the class, which I w which was one of my plans uh, in masters to get connection with other people. What are they doing? What is their research? Meet other professors. And this class is, was something that I was I'm very interested in, and I'm learning from different type of research, different areas, and uh, and it's very fascinating. But overall. Um, I'm happy that we have this option to take courses and doing the lab work, but at the same time it's hard to manage in the beginning, especially because you're new and you're already stressed. Um, but the TAing is, is very fun. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Although the workload is sometimes too much, but I enjoy it very, very much, yeah. Very good. Now, Daniel, let's kind of finalize with you because when you came to the lab, I remember you saying that you wanted to go to medical school. So what is it that actually changed your mind and now you want to go into teaching in a post-secondary education? So what is it that you found that is attractive in teaching as opposed to going back and trying to become a physician? I think like many other undergraduate students in the kinesiology program, the main objective is to go into medical school. So I had come into a master's program in the hopes that it would help me build a knowledge base, help me build a skill base, and help me to apply again as a more competitive candidate for medical school. And, but during my time here, I began to learn different skills, the research was rewarding, and it was a process that I was enjoying quite a bit. So when I got to the end of my master's degree, I had approached you and I said, do you mind if I stay here for a PhD? This was something that I didn't know that I enjoyed doing. I didn't know that it was something that I would be good at. And it was something that I, I, I saw that I could do for uh, the long term. Mm -hmm. So during my PhD, I had more opportunities, more experiences that I was able to partake in. And one of them was to give a guest lecture in your nutrition course and to interact with students here, nutrition students here, when we did the exam reviews and these collective experiences kind of began to veer my interests and my career path into one that would be teaching at the post-secondary level and interacting with students at this level is something that is fascinating because you don't only teach them, you begin to uh, stimulate thought and and learn different ideas, original ideas coming from students, and, and it's, it's a rewarding experience. And so that's how I kind of went from being an aspiring medical student mm -hmm. to medical school student to now wanting to pursue a career in teaching. So, so this, is the, this is the story then. Thank you very much. I think you guys provided a very good, I think, overall understanding of things. Mm -hmm. Your opinions are very good. And we are going to try to do this more often or other times so we can actually see how they how things develop from now on because this is the first take let's see how Aries goes how she develops in the future how Mateo also <laughs> progresses in this in his in his endeavor as to become a medical student and then you to become a, a post secondary teacher and i'm sure they are going to do you're going to be it's going to be great Thank you and see you in the next. Bye for now.